the studios of Sondland University, this is Robcast, the light-hearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi folks, and welcome to an all-new episode of Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, but um, the university may be less um, well. There have been talks about you know, a lot of cutbacks yeah. in our budget recently, and basically that's, uh, well, not the talk of the town, but the talk of the campus right, right. now. <laughs> Well, there's this big term austerity that's been doing the rounds for a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would need to explain what exactly yeah. austerity means. Well, I think the, the core meaning would be it means that governments see the need to reduce spending. Right. Our government here in Zaland certainly sees that need, and we, we're having a cutback of, I don't know, 10 million in our annual budget. Yeah. So I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about what impact yeah. cutbacks can have on universities in general. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> no problem. I, I'm thinking about that all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and the, obviously, there's a range of measures that a university can take in response to budget cutbacks, or mm -hmm. even if there is no increase in the budget with wages and salaries going up, it's still... That is almost a, like a cutback if yeah. you don't increase the budget reg regularly. Yeah. So I thought, let's start with um, a university could reduce the range of subjects available for students. Um, that is actually what our university is talking about right now, uh, reducing the range of subjects, maybe also reducing the number of chairs, not chairs that you sit on, <laughs> but <laughs> the chairs that professors hold, right. meaning reducing staff, reducing the number of professors. Of course, yeah. they will not be fired, but... Uh, as soon as old ones retire, then those would not be uh, replaced. Right. So these are professorial positions, but that right. would involve quite a group of other workers of various types attached to the chair. Uh, of course. Of course, there's the administrative staff that goes with it, so secretaries, maybe even technical personnel. Yeah. Uh, but also, well, let's say university teachers that don't teach at a professor's level but yeah. still are necessary to to conduct the courses. So what sort of impact do you think this would have or will have on students? Uh, I think the first impact is actually a psychological one. I think it, it uh, leads to a sort of a depressed atmosphere on campus. Right. You sort of think, feel that things are going down the drain. The second thing is, of course, that the attractiveness of our university is greatly, will be greatly reduced. People come here for special offers, for special courses, because we're not really sitting uh, um, in a place where everybody would absolutely want to go. So that is a big problem. But if you look at the UK, all universities are faced with um, a, a very tight budget or budget restrictions. Mm -hmm. So um, if you take a global view, if mm -hmm. a lot of different institutions are faced with the but same of, situation. Of course, then you are <clears throat> taking tuition fees and have raised them uh, to a quite a high level, mm -hmm. which is something that Germany has, meanwhile, uh, all but abolished. Right. So that's a difference here. Uh, another problem is, of course, the, the, the quality of the, of the teaching, the quality mm -hmm. of the course yeah. you're taking. And by course, I do not necessarily only mean the individual course, but the course of study, so yeah. the whole uh, education. Right. What about if um, if a university decides to change its employment policy and <laughs> to employ fewer tenured staff, that is, staff who are there a long time, Mm -hmm. um, and move to employing people on shorter contracts. Uh, that's actually what they're doing right now. Um, so um, the problem is a lot of our people are on non-tenured contracts that, I don't know, last about two years, and after that they'll, they'll have to go and look somewhere else. Now the problem with that is, of course, uh, those people will teach they will t want to teach and do a good job, but at the same time, all, all the while, they'll be looking around 
for some place where they can get a regular tenured position. So part of their mind is going elsewhere、hmm. while they're doing their job here at the university. Again, what about the student experience?、Um, Does it make a difference whether someone is on a longer or a shorter contract? Yes, because、um, students, even though they're here for only say three or four years, will want to have a person that they can contact on a regular basis、uh, about whom they think that they will. Hold their office hours、uh, in still in ten years,、uh, not in ten years, but in three years from now.、Yeah. So that is a huge problem, actually. And the last thing that I would like to mention、um, is that,、um, of course, courses are being developed over a longer period of time. So, if in one term you're starting a new concept, then that may not work right away, and the course will get better. Uh, with several iterations of that course,、yeah. so、hmm. well, these these are not the only ways in which universities can save money. But maybe we should wind things up for today.、Uh, we'll、yes, come yes. Come back to the topic. It's a huge topic, and let's talk about it next time,、uh, which will be very soon. So keep your iPods running. Keep on downloading our Ropecast. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.